Okay, I got the design inlay kit all unpacked, and I just want to show you what all we got. Got another one of the, you get another one of the turn lock bases. It comes with the guide bushings for the inlay kit. We've got one, two, three, and four of the design slash inlay uh, templates. This one here is the one I'll probably be using the most, the bow tie one. But I'm looking forward to trying out some of these others too. Uh, it also come with screws to uh, mount that uh, base plate onto the router. I probably won't be using that one. I'll put it back for a stock since I've already got two routers with those on it. Uh, got a couple of router bits that work along with it. We got a eighth inch spiral bit and a quarter inch um, v bit and the v bit is for just the design portion the way I read the instructions and then this here the eighth inch spiral is for cut throughs and for our inlays we got this big plate here that is for putting onto our workpiece and putting these templates into kind of hard to do one handed so I want to wait on that, but it it goes in there. Trust me on that. I know it for a fact. I've done used it or tried it out. Um, come with a pencil to mark out your designs using this uh, bushing. The pencil goes through it to mark your designs so you can actually see what it's going to look like before you start cutting on it. And uh, that's the design inlay kit. We got a set of instructions with it. Very, very detailed. So that's definitely going to be a help because I need to read that thoroughly before I start and mess up a charcuterie board. I just wanted to show you what it looked like when it is in this uh, base plate is what I'm going to call it. It's just a really good snug fit so there's no slack. It is does require two hands but it is in there good and solid so you don't have to worry about it shifting on you. Okay now I'm back. I've got the 17 millimeter bushing put in my router base along with the eighth inch spiral bit. I've got it set at about an eighth of an inch past the bushing. Um, probably going to go a little bit deeper. I put my base here, the main base, is attached to two pieces of plywood that is butted up against this. And I've got some of this non-slip stuff under it so that it shouldn't move on me. And we're going to go with the medium inlay bow tie and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and carve that and then I'll be right back okay I just got that carved out and uh, I went just right at about a quarter of an inch deep. I'll check it out here. Point two eight eight five. Okay, we're just barely over a quarter of an inch deep in her pocket. So. Uh, I'm going to get set up for making the inlay and I'll be right back. Okay, I've got my 7 sixteenths um, bushing put into the router. Same uh, eighth inch spiral bit in the router. Uh, I'm going to take this in several passes. And uh, I've got a piece of three quarter maple that I'm going to be cutting through. And I'm just going to take it in several slow, low passes. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the router bit up in it. I'm going to set it into place in a corner. And then I'm going to slowly lower the router bit down into it. Make my initial pa first pass. And then continue to lower it. I've got my um, maple uh, blue tape and CA glued down to a backer that is under it so that when I plunge through the maple it won't break loose and uh, we're gonna get started and hope for the best for this is the first time I've done this and I just hope it turns out right now as you can see here I'm adjusting my router bit down with the router running and I'm just taking very very uh, shallow passes around the template probably about an eighth of an inch at a time until I finally cut through uh, I don't have a, a good plunge router so I like to use this one and uh, I'm just continually lowering until I reach the final depth I'm wanting and here you can see the walnut charcuterie board with the maple bow tie in place there was very minimal gaps just a little bit of CA glue and maple sawdust cured it right up I'll have more pictures later thanks hey everybody um, I'm getting ready to do the next part of my little uh, video series on doing um, bow tie inlays. Um, I just done the uh, one using the design inlay kit from Milescraft. Um, it works really, really well for doing those bow ties. Um, but now I'm getting ready to do the by hand version. <clears throat> and as you can tell by seeing my breath, it's cold. Um, I got the little heater going today. It's actually in the 40s here in Kentucky, which is not enjoyable to me. But um, I've got this really nice piece of ambrosia maple. Really, really pretty. It's got a big crack in it right here, though, if you can see that. Yeah, right there. And it goes all the way through and on the back side even. And I've already cut this out to be a charcuterie board. Um, this is just a stock item. so. Um, but I need to stabilize that now. And the op obvious way of doing that is to put a bow tie in it. And I've got some Purple Heart. Which is really quite pretty. If I can get this thing to focus it's wanting to focus more on my lights but right there you can see it better um, real pretty piece of purple heart and I'm going to make a bow tie out of this first we're going to mark out our bow tie we, when you're doing it by hand you have to cut your bow tie first so I have various measuring tools here um, Let's see what I've got this set to. Looks like I've got this set to right at a 19 degree. And it don't matter. You can do whatever degree you want. Only thing it does is make it look different. Okay, I'm back now. Um, the noise you're hearing, I had to move the heater a little closer. Um, but I've got my bow ties marked out, or my bow tie marked out. You can see it there. Um, it's three inches that way, uh, only an inch wide, and the center point's an inch and a half. Um, I did have to reset my angle for where I was only wanting to go an inch wide. Um, I had to reset it to a seven degree bevel or angle um, thing to remember if your bandsaw is 
like mine, not much count at all. Um, make sure you cut to the outside of these lines so that you can go back in with a chisel or razor knife, sandpaper, whatever, and clean up those marks. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut this, and then I'll be back. Okay, now I got my bow tie cut, and it took me probably about... 10 to 15 minutes to get this thing cleaned up to where I could use it. See, that's where the design inlay kit has a big leg up on me anyway, doing it by hand. I haven't got the setup that uh, keeps me from having to do as much cleanup. Um, but anyway, I got the bow tie cut out. Um, now the next thing we have to do is I've got... It's, it's just a carving knife from like Hobby Lobby or somewhere. It's in them starter packs. It's just a real cheapo. Um, I use it for a marking knife. That way I can make sure that I'm as close to my bow tie as possible. And that mark that I put across the center before cutting, cutting this out, um, I lined that up best I can to that um, crack and something else I also do hold on just a minute is I get a clamp this is something I've started doing recently I like to get a clamp and I'll clamp that as tight as I can get it back together try to squeeze it together that way when this is put in it's compression fit it can't go nowhere but I take that mark and just eyeball it as close as you can get it to the center of that crack and then I take my marking knife and I get just as close as I can get to that bow tie you can always take away but you can't add to in other words And I'll mark this all the way around my bow tie key here. And I just put a good cut mark all the way around it. One more side. Okay, now we've got her, I would show you, but it will not show up on camera. I know that it won't. We've got her marked, though, for that, all marked out here. Now, I'm going to take a uh, chisel, and I don't have no high, fancy chisels. These are mainly Harbor Freight or uh, Flea Market finds. Um take this chisel and I'll make these lines a little more permanent, I guess you'd call it. And then uh, I'm going to take my router, my trim router, with that Milescraft uh, trim router base on it, and I'm going to put an eighth inch spiral bit in it and just hog out the majority of this material, staying kind of away from my lines because you don't want to hit into those lines. You want to clean that up with the chisel. So uh, let me do that and I'll be right back. Okay, now, as you can see, I just got through taking the chisel and deepening these uh, lines. That way I'm not relying on just seeing the uh, marking knife lines. And I'm going to go in now with this 
eighth inch spiral bit. Let's see if I can get this to focus. Nope, it ain't going to. Anyway, this is an eighth inch spiral upcut bit um, made by Yonico. Uh, they're a uh, router bit company that is on Amazon. The bits are pretty good. Um, they they do seem to last quite a while as long as they're kept clean. Now as soon as they start gumming up, they're useless. So make sure you keep them clean. I just use um, some uh, Simple Green and uh, clean them ever so often. That was my other board fell over. All happens during filming, doesn't it? Anyway, I'm going to trade out this router bit into my trim router here. I've got the Milescraft um, compact base on it and the handles make it so much easier to use. I'm going to put this bit in there and hog out the majority of this material and then I'll come back and show you what we do next. Okay, I talked about this uh, briefly on my unboxing video. Um, but this right here, I can't say enough good things about it. This is a miter, uh, the depth gauge by Milescraft. I normally keep it set at an eighth of an inch. And I can just set it right here on top of my base plate and lower my router bit. And I can dial this thing in to where it is absolutely perfect every time and on my signs and stuff it really comes in handy but what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it at an eighth and I'm going to like I just done and I adjusted my router bit to an eighth of an inch deep where it'll be taking out an eighth of an inch of material and then I went ahead and I reset this to a quarter of an inch and I'm going to go in at an eighth and clear out everything and then adjust it down to the quarter inch and continue to clear out and then I'll show you what we have to do next. pocket for our bow tie carved in. Now what we need to do is we got to take a chisel and we got to go around and sharpen up our corners and I I try my best to go as close as I can to the lines that I've created before. I've been using a hand router now for several years for my signs and I feel more confident with it than I do in my chiseling ability. So if you are more capable with a chisel by all means stay a little bit farther away from your lines and shave it back to the lines with a chisel but I'm not as used to using chisels as I probably should be so I'd rather go with my hand router let's get her clamped back in place and I think about going to be it. So let me put a little bit of glue in there. 
and I'm just using some CA glue on these for this time around. Um, you can use CA glue or wood glue, either one. CA glue does such a good job of holding everything. I just I like to use it. And I just put a good thin layer on the bottom where this will be coming in contact. And I'll get this started. And let's get it pounded in. Okay, y'all. I got the bow tie trimmed down smooth. Let me flip you around and show you at this. Okay, there it is. And as you can see right there is my gap. It's like a sixteenth. Right there is a little minimal gap. But still, it's very minimal. It just takes a little bit of practice. I, I think this has been my about my fourth bow tie. And uh, it does get easier the more you do it. It just takes a while, um, but there's that one, and now I'll show you the one from the design inlay kit. Now there's from the design inlay kit, as you can see it's just a real fine gap that was all the way around it. That may be my error, but it was pretty uniform. Um, I just put a, some CA glue in there, filled it with some uh, maple sawdust, and it still turned out great. I'm still pleased with that, highly pleased with it. But uh, there is the side by side. So to wrap up this video, I would uh, like to give you all a brief overview of the pros and cons of both of both the design inlay kit and doing it by hand the design inlay kit pro is time saver it saves so much time it is unreal it I was able to do this inlay in about 15 to 20 minutes max and that's the first time I've used it I hadn't practiced with it or anything I just read the directions really well before I started. The only con that I can see with it is you've got to have a decent sized piece of stock to cut your bow tie out of to allow the template or the base that the template goes into to be able to rest on it well. That's the only con I can see. Now, on doing it by hand, the pros and cons are exactly the opposite. The big pro on doing it by hand, you're not limited to the size of stock you have to cut your inlay out of. As long as it's big enough for the inlay, you can use it. The big con is time. If you're trying to make multiple of these at a time there's there's no way you can do it by hand if you're new to this like I am it took me 30 to 45 minutes to do that one inlay and I'm trying to get to a more production quicker churning out product and that's the reason why I wanted the design inlay kit and it definitely lives up to my hopes it I can do two with the design inlay kit in the time it takes me to do one by hand I will see you all on the next one next videos that will be coming out will be for the sign pro I'm hoping to have those out by Christmas Thanks again for watching. Have a good one.